And we have gone live with Suzilla. Hey, it's Susie and Matt at Suzilla at Suzy Health Solutions over here in Winant, the lovely city that is Wenatchee. And uh, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's the second to last one in this office space because we we'll, we we are moving down to Mission Street. Yes, we are still staying. We are still Suzy Health Solutions. We were just changing office spaces. That's all. And we'll have actually a nicer space to work in. Um, for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, and that's one of the big topics that we're gonna bring up today is how to build away from a toxic culture. Yes, yes. Well, you brought up a couple, you brought a couple articles to the to the table and we'll take a look at those in a minute. But yeah, I mean, sometimes you have to sort of recognize, the hard part for a lot of people is mm. recognizing that it's a toxic culture. Well, it, it's, it's not just recognizing it's a toxic culture because we, one of the things I've, I've I've talked to, you know, sole proprietors and business owners, and, mm-hmm. and and the first question out of my mouth is, why would you build something toxic? That's a good question. I mean, it's but they do. I mean, people build toxic businesses all the time, well, or 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 they uh-huh. or they start with a nice, awesome well-balanced setup and it somehow goes toxic. Well, we've been toxic as a kind of a corporate structure since at least the 90s, from what I can see. We as the United States? We as the United States. I think we as you and I, probably not so much. Yeah, and it's, it's one of the things that, that we've, we've picked up and it's like, okay, well, this manager sucks. Why does he suck? I never want to do that again. And it kind yeah. of, they, they kind of get these, these check marks, you know? Do I want to call up an employee at 1030 at night and say, hey, you're messed up. You got to see you, you know, 7 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. I never want to be that guy. No, we also don't have employees. Uh, Directly under hire, yes, but we do have teammates. Yes, people that we work with together. And we don't call them at 1030 at night saying, why didn't you do this? Yeah, if it's it's not, you know, as as I put it to one, I asked him, is the Russian mafia chasing you or are you on fire? And the answer mm-hmm. was no. And it's like, well, why are you calling me after business hours mm-hmm. on my cell phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because but you didn't ask him that yesterday when he called you during business hours on your cell phone. Correct. It's it's one of those things. Come from a tax, toxic culture mm-hmm. versus setting boundaries. Yes. Well, yeah, boundaries are really important. Yes, but like I said, we've been so toxic in, 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 you know, in the corporate structure for so long mm-hmm. that most people don't recognize it when they're being it. That's true, because it's it's the boiling frog theory. Yeah. You don't realize you're in it until you're floating at the top going, gorp, gorp, gorp. Um, and then what it boils down to is if, if the toxic concept is normalized, mm-hmm. Then everyone's like, well, yeah, of course they called me at three o'clock in the morning because, you know, it was an emergency. It's like, how big of an emergency was it really that they had to call you at that hour when you're not on call? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, you know, oh, I, I stayed late because I had to. It's like, did you really have to? You know, I stayed over, I, I stayed late, but, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not, but I'll, I'll, I'll go home early you know, on, on, I'll you know, go home early on Friday or I'll have a, a short or a longer lunch so I don't have to worry about overtime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or here, run these supplies over to the other store. They need them. Mm-hmm. In your, your own per- car. Your car. car. Yeah. You know, they're, you know, or hey, you know, we require you to carry your cell phone on you 24-7 and we're not going to compensate you for it. And, oh, you're not on call. You just have to have your cell phone on you all the time. Yeah. Oh, and, and if, if we call you, that, does, that doesn't that does mean you're getting paid for that call. Mm-hmm. It just means you're going to, you know, we just need to talk to you. Yeah. And, and small abuses like that add up big. Well, yeah. And you see that outside of work, but then you start to see the abuses inside of work. Okay. Um, you know, a, a good example is uh, there was... I, I talked to one, one, you know, one of my co- contractor buddies, uh, and he's he mentioned, you know, there was this horrible manager that just talked down to everyone, mm-hmm. and lo and behold, his stuff was the first one that got jacked up. 
mm-hmm. by the employees. Well, yeah. Every chance they got is like, okay, we're going to mess with him. And mm-hmm. it's like, because there was zero respect being shown from that management down. Mm-hmm. And so often, I don't know what it is about the middle management mm-hmm. position that they're such, so frequently jerks. I, I don't get why that is where the. It's the corporal position. Okay. Uh, corporal is, is, is the, is the lowest rung of an NCO in the, in the chain of command in, 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 in the army. Okay. And you, you get, you get two types. You, uh-huh. you get one. This is a hard charger trying to, trying to move up the chain of command. Okay. The other is the one that's stuck there that's not moving and they're frustrated. That's a lot of, yeah. That's probably not really happy for them. No, either position are position. Not, not really happy. Well, but you have to, I mean, yeah, I guess. And that's the position of middle management in America. So why does anyone want to be in middle management? Pays more. Oh, welcome, welcome Nick. Our, our, <laughs> our, our uh. Our third voice today. Um, he's going to throw. Yeah, it, it sometimes it's pay. Yeah, it's it's about pay. It's about the bottom line. Yeah, I get paid more. Yeah, but you work more. Everybody I know that did the whole middle management thing. If, if they and heaven forbid, if they go to salary, mm-hmm. you end up you break down what their salaried hours are versus for what they pay. They're getting paid under minimum wage. You know, they're working you know sixty eighty hours a week. Yeah. And they're bringing in, you know, fifty thousand dollars a year. Well, guess what? That's like eight bucks an hour. Oh yeah, I I, I had no. I did not do the math. I was just randomly throwing numbers. Yeah, I, I had I had one uh, VP that, that came into a workplace and asked me, you know, what I worked and and did the thank God you're on salary and oh. said it out loud. <laughs> Because I was there at six in the morning, we usually leave at eight at night. So what? And you were working way for not nearly enough money, probably as a grand scheme of things. Oh, I was kind of in a in a really weird position because I had fast tracked, um, and I made like five promotions in a year. Could so it be said almost. that you were middle management? Yeah, I was definitely middle management at that point. Okay, so were you working your way up the up the ladder, or were you stuck? Um, kind of this weird both position, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't know it at the time um, because the, the the my mentor at the time left the corporation, ah. and. Uh, I was I was seen as the the golden child that was remaining, so therefore I was the became the golden calf about to be slaughtered. Gotcha. So were you a jerk? Um, no. Uh, Are you sure? Yeah, uh, because uh, when I'd set projects out, they were the only ones. As as my assembly department stated. You're the only one that puts these together that we can understand. Okay. Because I actually did the work. <laughs> okay, so you were doing. Okay, so you were probably doing. Okay, I've seen this, and this that would have created, a, in grand scheme, dissatisfaction. You were doing the work of you were doing the work you should have been delegating. Um. No, what it did was it, it created vulnerability because uh, the the people who were running the jerk lifestyle mm-hmm. became envious. Okay. Why why aren't my underlings you know respecting me? Okay. Why aren't they rooting for me too? Well, yeah. Well, you were making their lives easier, but your life was harder as a res- as a result. <laughs> there's a there's a weird balance there. It, it, you did it, not have a decent work life balance at that job. No, no. I'm I'm I, it's, it's, it's one of those things which brings us to the. One of the things in the soup was, you know, someone asked the question, you know, how long joining the insurance industry does your life go back to normal? There's no normal. (laughs) There's no normal. It's you have to carve out the balance. 
when you're first starting, it's, it's a grind, you know, when you're working for yourself, mm -hmm. there's no question about it. It's, it's, it's always, well, okay, always be, always be closing. It's the ABC, Glenn Gary, mm -hmm. Ross rule. And that stays with you through mm -hmm. your career as long as you're in sales. Um, the first, when you're building your business, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, if you're trying to do it from a, quote, traditional manner where you're doing 400 cold calls a day and getting a 1% return. Yeah. That's kind of sucks. Oh, the float phone slamming. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, here, slap down the white pages. Here's your, mm -hmm. here's your lead book. And yeah, people do that. Mm -hmm. You can try it. It ain't going to be fun. You might even succeed with it. Um, if you um, go into the 21st century and use tools that are available to you, you might be able to get past the, um, you know, ramen six day, ramen five days a week and and uh, eggs two days a week. Yeah. So if you're if you're in one of those situations where you're because the the whole phone slamming is kind of not a really. Sorry, I can't make a phone call with your iPad. <laughs> okay, so when you get into those situations, now you need to to work on well, how do I how do I make things better? Right, you don't want to get out of it because you want to continue building this business. Well, it depends. Some people have started to do what they call a quiet quit. Okay, that is when you're not building your own business. Which when you're when, when you're, you're an employee working for somebody else, when you're an employee, the quiet quit. Oh, well, no, we've seen burnout with with when you're running your own business. Well, yeah, and I, usually it's it's. Not a very good place to shop. No, no, and that's uh, it's like why don't you just call it a day and retire? <laughs> yeah, we, and that's we, fine. And that's you, you, that you, happens usually when you're in a quiet quit situation, which you should explain to our okay, listeners what that means. A quiet quit is where you do the minimal possible. You you ghost in at, at nine and you ghost out shortly before five. Uh, you take your 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 full lunch. Mm -hmm. You, you're, you're there only in body. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do any improvements. Um, and it's, it's a quiet quit. You're, you're reserved that this is a job. Okay. So you're doing the work a day thing. You're going in, you do your job, you clock out, you go home. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily a quiet quit. That's just not pursuing forward motion. That's just stagnation. Stagnation. Now, if you were doing the malicious compliance level where you do exactly as they say at every moment, that's that's a little more. That's accurate. just another that's just another flavor of. of it. Like, well, yeah. Yeah. It's but a quiet flavor. quit is that. And they're they're seeing that also in the respects of, well, friends in a workplace. Mm -hmm. People don't just OK. Out. Okay, here's the, here's the scoop. Mm -hmm. What the article was saying was that people were working more remotely, so it's harder to make friends. Mm -hmm. I kind of think about this at the way the corporate structure has evolved over years. Used to be, in the stereotypical mm -hmm. madman type world, you had your work friends, and everyone would mm -hmm. go out and do barbecues on the weekends, go out for drinks afterwards, and because you expected to stay in that job for 40 years mm -hmm. and retire, that was your social circle. And you were kind of, and you were, that's just what it was. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That ain't the truth anymore. People don't stay at jobs for 40 years, generally speaking. They're, they're there for, you know, you can, they stay for two, three years, move on to something else. You don't want to necessarily, and you're going to, once in a while, I've seen this happen. You find your absolute best friend working in a mm -hmm. job. I've seen that happen two, three times out of my, let's see, I'm 50. I've been working since I was 17. I don't know, 40 odd years of work, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen that happen twice. Um, generally speaking, I do not keep work friends. I mean, I would have people that I was, you know, you know, friendly with at work. And I go out once in a while, I go out 
afterwards, but we never really, I, I never really managed to thoroughly cultivate it. Gosh, you're my best friend friendship. Because when you're not doing, when you're away from there, you're just talking about work. You know? That's one, that's one of the issues is, is no one wants to hang out and mm-hmm. hang out with someone after you've left the place and bitch about the place. Yeah. No one wants to do that. Well, that's not entirely true. It, it, people do like to do that, but not everybody likes to do uh, that. Very few. It's, it's definitely not become, it used to be a lot more popular than it is now. Here's part of the problem. You go and bitch about mm-hmm. work, someone in that group is going to report back to the boss. At least that's the fear. That's, it's, that's, a, it's a serious that, fear. That's a fear. And it's, it's more common than it used to be. Well, some of that is is, is having, you know, the group of, of disgruntled employees going out and drinking together. Mm-hmm. You go to the manager, and if you get a manager in the mix, it's all bad. Yeah, and and uh, and that is something that has been cultivated for, like I said, the like last 30, 40 years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when you have an office, and then and this is kind of cool because I was, you know, I was watching, you know, when you, when you ask, you know, well, what is what does your office do for team building? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, what's your, what's your, what's your job, you know, what's your company do for team building? Are you, are you, you know, are you getting together and doing things together outside of the workplace, outside of the paycheck? Do you share enough values that you want to do that? No, team building is usually a required event or, or, or an offered event that people want to be part of. The, the company picnic, the Christmas party, that kind of thing, which doesn't exist anymore in corporate culture. The company picnic, forget that, man. When was the last time you had fun? At, you know, when was the last time work was fun? Hey, we used to have company picnics. And that's the answer usually. And it's because the the the, the team building, the the relationship building, mm-hmm. the group the, the group con, the group connections are much rarer than they used to be. And there's a lot of lip service about it from corporate, but they never really actually do well, anything. Well, about that's it. because they're they're doing the whole. Well, how does it affect the bottom line? Yeah. And then the bottom line is now they're having problems with retention. Oh yeah. Because who wants to hang out with a place that sucks? Mm-hmm. Well, you know what you're... Well, yeah. And it's like, well, oh, we'll just give it more money. And guess what? It doesn't work that way anymore. Yeah. It's not all about the almighty dollar. It's the work-life balance. And people are having more fun with their life outside of their workplace circle. And that's why it's harder to... Um, make workplace friends. Yeah. Or do you want workplace friends? It looks like you have something to contribute, Nick. Kind of look like you want to say something. I think the the main crux mm-hmm. of workplace culture nowadays is to get in, do your job, and then get out, which doesn't really allow for those types of friendships to happen. <laughs> that is popular because you are part of the younger generation. Get in, make your buck, get out. Um, how- There's no real cult. That's like corporate. It's like oh yeah. Just do your job. Yeah, it's very mercenary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's and okay. so like, and then it's like, and it's like, oh, it's just cheaper to just replace them rather than mm-hmm. promote them for their hard work. And so no one really is incentivized to do and work harder. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're kind of become a grand giant temporary agency. That's an interesting way to look at it. Because everything, everything <laughs> is, everything is temporary. It's kind, well, of, it's kind of like Gilded Age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, 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 what it does, it makes the employee disposable. Yeah, and that's dangerous. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous because they're gonna. What they'll do is your corporations will stop off. Right now, they're having to offer larger dollar incentives to get the job, mm-hmm. um, to get someone to do the job. Well, that's fine, but they're still gonna abuse you when you are there. Alexa, mute. Some companies will. Uh, they're going to still try and get as much, they're going to squeeze as much out of you as they possibly can. And if you've got somebody who's. Here's, here's the thing. Who, uh, this is, this is very important. You, you said magic word. They're going to squeeze you. Yeah. It's easy to squeeze someone when you don't care about them. Yeah. 
when you when you haven't broken bread with them, when you when you haven't you know met their kids and their wife or their husband, when there isn't a connection, there isn't a, that emotional connection. That's not necessarily a work friend situation. That's a team building situation. That's the Chris. That's the company Christmas party. That's the Chris company picnic situation. That's not happening anymore. Yeah. And. Even if you do, de- so many people are so dissatisfied with their job or doing the quiet quit, mm-hmm. come in, mm-hmm. punch in, do your work, go home. Don't take on extra projects. Don't take on any extra um, mm-hmm. extra work. Just do what exactly what is lined out for you. Yeah. Don't push the envelope at all. Okay. When you've got that level of, they're not going to want to go to the company picnic because mm-hmm. they don't care. They have no personal investment in the corporation. Their their investment is in themselves and their and and their bottom line. Mm-hmm. It is this country has come to a bottom line level for everybody. Mm-hmm. And so everyone, and it's the thing no, is the, I'm not going to say everyone. A lot. Okay, the and bottom, the almighty dollar has become the driver for corporate for for um, business in America. Yes, because you stripped out all the social responsibility. Exactly. However, what happens when you have people who want to be socially responsible, who build a company? They get burned out because there's no support. Oh, so you feeling burned out? No, we're special. I, I think for the top, it's uh-huh. the bottom line. But for mm-hmm. the bottom, the grunts, the workers, you know, um, it, it is now the bottom line because there's nothing else. Mm-hmm. It's their it's, bottom line. Yeah. Well, it's because they've been... To, they've been Bam, 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 bam. Okay, we're going to, these three people quit. Mm-hmm. Well, congratulations. You have, this one person has mm-hmm. all of their work now and you still have to get it done in that eight hour period. And this is a very important disclaimer. A pizza party is not a band-aid. No, <laughs> nor is it team building. Nor is it team building. No, it's really not. It does a pizza, a, a slice of pizza does not solve that problem. Yeah, and we've, we've seen that, that, that band-aid of, oh, we better throw them a pizza party because the, the troops are upset. And it's like, no, that's just horrible leadership of, of a checked out management. Yeah. And it's not a pizza party. It's mm-hmm. not everyone get together and enjoy come and enjoy the, the group mm-hmm. and talk and conversation and have a drink and have a slice of pizza. Mm-hmm. No, it's here, here's some pizza. You can have that on your lunch. Yeah. That's what that's that's what they're doing. And it's going to be cold. But, uh, but you know, if you're lucky, if you're you lucky. might get the nasty ass taco pizza. I like the taco yes, pizza. Yes, when it's fresh, but when uh-huh. it is two hours old and wilty, it's mm-hmm. yummy. So yeah, it's. I I think that the, that the smarter companies, mm-hmm. the smarter companies, will work on actually doing that that social integration and having meaning. But how do they get their employees to buy into that if they're doing the the, the it's, soft quit? It's time. It's it's. It's time. It's saying the what is believable for a duration of time. Okay. I found this on the I'll act some you. Check it out. <laughs> uh, yeah. So too it, much electronics. Yeah, too much electronics. You. It's my team going. You. <laughs> you have to a either wear them down with with with. You know, these are people who have gone through. Bad relationship after bad relationship mm-hmm. after bad relationship. Yeah. People walk into jobs expecting toxic situations anymore. And they won't believe you. No, they will not. So you got to wear them down. <laughs> if you don't wear them down, you have to wear them out. And I mean by wear them out is is they don't believe you. It's like, sorry, you're not fitting in. You've got to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and, and that's some of that you're going to have gatekeepers on the way in. You know, is this person, one of the things is we, we, we had the conversation, uh, always when we're, when in the mentor situation is, is the person coachable? Do they have a willingness to learn and to adapt? Mm-hmm. Um, there are some people out there that they no, you can tell right away that they're, they're, they're closed off. Mm-hmm. And if someone's closed off, you can do whatever you want. They're not going to change. Well, I mean, a lot of it's, well, 
you hate to say closed off. I mean, mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's just enough that's got to be cracked mm -hmm. because they've been abused for so many years. Oh, yeah. So there's like, okay, they're, they're the people who've done the quiet quit. Yeah. And they're moved on to something else and mm -hmm. they're not expecting anything different. Mm -hmm. And how do you, but how do you tell that during an interview process? Because it's not going to be a simple one, one interview. Yeah. You know, you're not going to bring in, and this is where that, the, the friends is important. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, I'm going to hire some rando off the street. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, hey, I know such and such. They're cool. They've got some mad skills in doing this. Mm -hmm. Could, let's let's bring them in for an interview. We also know that sometimes that does not succeed. We also, yeah. I mean, we we saw that happen just yesterday with the, that insurance company who brought someone in because their wife said this gal is cool, <laughs> and she was a disaster. However, and this is this is important, the the boss mm -hmm. and the wife mm -hmm. do not have an emotional connection with the actual office. The boss has a more of an emotional connection with the office. But the wife does not. No, she does not. She's not part of that, she's not part of the dynamic. So you had someone outside Pushing. making that decision. Pushing the decision. Pushing the decision. Yeah. And then there was no, in the office itself, which is an incredibly small office, mm -hmm. there was no consultation amongst the group to see if the mm -hmm. chemistry was good. And that's, that is, like I said, that's important. It's like, yes, he did a great thing, husband and wife, by listening to his wife. However, he did a disservice to the, the entire office. Um, and that's that's important having that emotional. But the good news is it was yes, it was rough mm -hmm. for a while. But the the person who was hired it was no longer working. Mm -hmm. there. A realization was come to us like, oh, this is not working. They have to mm -hmm. move on. Now let's let's get into something that, that's that's important in small business. Mm -hmm. And you've done it really really well. Well, thank you. And, and I because we're a husband and a wife team. Mm -hmm. and, and this this is one of those principles. It is very, very important when you run your business. If you have a partner at home, mm -hmm. they're going to be in every small business I've ever encountered. They have bleed over with the business. Mm -hmm. If they don't approve of the business or have any knowledge of it, they can sabotage it. Are you saying I sabotage well or I don't sabotage well? No, I'm saying <laughs> when I brought you into a business uh -huh. and you were emotionally invested in it, uh -huh. you you became part of the business. Yes. I I, I, and, I threw in. I threw I went all in. You went all in. However, there's been other businesses that we've we've worked on or other projects that we've worked on, you didn't and have been so successful. Um, and, and that's really important. Um, and, and cause we're, we're I'm, I, I had this conversation, uh, with someone that was interested in buying a business mm -hmm. and, and, she, and he, and he's like, oh yeah, my wife's supportive. And, you know, and she doesn't want, you know, to, it, to interfere with our time. And that was the cue to me that she had not bought into that business, that she was not a partner mm -hmm. in that business mm -hmm. and that if push comes to shove she would sabotage the business well she would sabotage it with the intent probably not consciously yeah. to keep their the relationship of their marriage intact mm -hmm. she was choosing the marriage over the business if you felt like that was if, if that if it came push come to shove that's probably where she was going with that not realizing that, I think not everybody can go all in. Well, it's just this, sometimes their brains just don't work that way. I know there's some some people that work this way, and it's very important to consider. It's it's like the the, the folks with the separate checking accounts. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I divide everything up. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what happens when one partner is making a hundred thousand, the other partner is making twenty five? 
That's and everything split evenly. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work the way it, it doesn't work so well. It it doesn't, and that that's no, but but it's not our place to criticize a relationship that seems to work. No, it is our 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 place to say, okay, this is what works. This is what we've seen, mm -hmm. and this has the potential to create something toxic if you're unaware of it. The key is making sure that they're aware of it and mm -hmm. are clear on what their boundaries are. Mm -hmm. You can't. Go and say, yeah, you can sit here and I can sit here and say, oh, I don't like that relationship. Yeah. I don't think it works when in fact it works for them wouldn't work for me. Mm -hmm. As long as everyone's on the same page and clear about it, you really, we're really in no position to, to criticize. As long as everybody's on the same page. But we're talking about creating a toxic work environment mm -hmm. and, and not creating one. Right. And work environments, people are rarely on the same page, let's be <laughs> honest. Well, we have the 30 minutes. So we are out of here. For Next week is going to be our last one here at the Wenatchee App Store because we're moving to Mission. Yes, Yay. we're moving to Mission Street. Woohoo! So, hey, have a good week. And think about your relationships. Yeah. Think about your, your team building. Mm -hmm. Think about if, you, if you've checked out, how are your network opportunities working out for you when you're cutting off your friends there you go. so hey have a great week and we will talk to everyone next week bye, bye.